Update 27.2, the mainline update, is live on PC with additions and numerous changes. My coverage of this update, just like with the Saint of Ultra and the Old Blood, will be in parts. This video will be covering the general additions, changes, and fixes. You can now research times 100 deployable blueprints in your dojo research rooms. The cipher research can be found in the Tenno lab and will cost you 10,000 credits, 5,500 Kopenix, 6,750 titanium, 300 asterite, and 5 Orcrux capacitors. The energy restore research can be found in the energy lab and will cost you 25,000 credits, 550 Fieldron samples, 6,750 cubic diodes, 300 Keslers, and 5 Fresnels. The shield restore can also be found in the energy lab and will cost you 25,000 credits, 550 Fieldron samples, 6,750 Kopenix, 300 ISOs, and 5 Coms. The ammo restore can be found in the chem lab and will cost you 25,000 credits, 550 detonite ampule, 675 carbides, 300 gallows rods, and 6 null stones. Lastly, the health restores can be found in the bio lab and will cost you 25,000 credits, 550 mutagen samples, 6,750 pustrels, 300 tracons, and 6 brachoid. Those resources will scale upwards based on your clan tier. Kit guns can now use skins. The market UI has also been updated to showcase nearly all the information as soon as you click on the item instead of needing to hover. Some weapons will still require you to scroll down to view all their stats. Now item labels are also on by default and can be turned off in the UI settings. Excavator health and shields now scale using the same formula as mobile defense terminal scaling and shield regeneration will be a percent of health rather than a flat value. Grenades now have markers to show their positions and you can shoot them mid-air as well as use Saren's Malt to remove and attach grenade. The game's max field of view is also now at 90. HDR support has been added and can be enabled after some work in your display settings. Also, deferred rendering can be enabled by the game's launcher settings. You can now remove items from your gear wheel by right-clicking over the item and it won't move you to the emote screen. DE noted that if you remove an item from any of the first 12 slots, the gear items above them won't slide into the open position due to key bindings. You will also need to place a gear item into the now open slot if you do that before you can add more items to the gear wheel. Also, if you remove slot 13 and above, then the gear items above them will slide down into the open position. They also made it so deactivating gear items by clicking on the item in the gear menu a second time will now re-equip the weapon you previously had equipped rather than always equipping your primary weapon. Although, at the moment, this doesn't seem to apply to the Omni Tool and Arc Gun Deployer. They also fixed mounting a K-Drive with a scanner equipped, not restoring it after dismounting, and any equippable gear item not restoring properly after performing a hack or finisher on an enemy. Now for the general additions. New Elite Shield Lancers will appear on level 25 plus missions on the Grenier Asteroid, Forest, Shipyard, and Galleon tile sets. And you can now view the wares of vendors and syndicates by selecting Browse Wares rather than the View Offerings tab in the standing page. A new trading policy has been put in place and will appear when you first trade after downloading the update. The trade window also now has tips to inform you on how to trade safely. You can now make your companion invulnerable in the simulacrum by selecting it within the spawn terminal. The Aklex has a Conclave skin and that can be purchased with Conclave standing. The Arsenal now displays a damage projectile section and status for weapons with built-in multi-shot is now under the status projectile stat. The Staticore has a new sound when fully charged, as well as the Javlock having a new explosive sound for its alternate fire. For general changes, you can now send weapons via through Nova's Wormhole. Garuda's Dread Mirror Shield has been increased slightly to help her protect her feet. Hildren's Haven ability now provides invulnerability to all damage for 3 seconds for her allies upon shields being depleted. Saren's Miasma will now only proc a single viral status on its initial hit, rather than each time Miasma applies damage due to the changes with a viral status effect. The Firestorm mod can now be equipped on all primary weapons, and the Fulmination mod can be equipped on all secondary weapons. The Codex console in the Orbiter will now show Leverian Prex cards rather than items from anywhere in the Codex, plus they also added a Leverian page to the Codex. The Quest section of the Codex now orders itself by Active, Incomplete, and then Complete. 
The Profit Taker's Blue Shield projectile attack's cooldown has also been increased after feedback. They have made the Focus Convergence Orb marker a lighter yellow. They have removed the Exterminate Enemy stage from Sortie Spy missions. Improvements were made towards hangs that could occur when selecting appearance in the arsenal. They've increased the frequency in which missions from the Void appear as Void Fishers. Camera Shake and Color Correction has been removed for other players in your squad when firing the Kuva Brahma. The Mastery Test UI screen shows more information. The Loading Screens Tips section has been updated with new visuals. The Network Not Responding icon has also been updated. Juggernauts now have a 90% chance to drop the Furliac pod blueprint. The max waypoint range is also now 250 meters. The revive screen now requires you to hold to confirm in order to revive and the spectator mode has been updated so that the squad panel, minimap and HUD trackers are now visible. The spectator camera now follows the movement of the player's camera more closely. You can now spectate the other fallen corpses of your allies and they fixed missing controller binding callouts in the spectator screen. They also fixed an issue with the current target icon not always appearing over the name of the player actually being spectated. Disruption missions are no longer eligible for Syndicate missions below level 15 due to Demolus not spawning. Paladino's Riven mod offering screen now includes the option to purchase Riven mod slots. You can now equip Veiled Kitgun Rivens on your primary weapon. They have reduced the pulsing effect frequency and size on Eidolon Vomvolus when in their energy form. Baruch's Reactive Storm Augment mod will now apply its adaptive status chance and damage type on Serene Storm area of effect attacks. Upon review, DE found some arc guns were not consistent with what the arsenal displayed. Thus, they have increased the speed of the Corvus and Fluctus's projectiles. They also increased the Grattler's projectile lifetime. Ivara Prime's unique effects when invisible will apply to any form of invisibility, not just her abilities. They have removed security cameras and turrets in the Corpus ship survival missions. They reduced the damage of slide attacks for dual swords in the Conclave, made minor UI tweaks in survival missions to improve readability. Projectiles from crossbows equipped with a Dali Ballistica skin now match the skin itself. They also updated the names of dojo decorations, with the example provided being small topiary bush, before that's what it was called, and now it is topiary bush, and then in brackets, the size of it. So in this case, small. They made some adjustments to the brightness of trees on the Oricon Moon tile set. Changes were made to Molecular Prime's casting effects so that it has better positioning. The Grenier Shield Lancer has been given a brand new reload animation. They updated the reload animation for the Mitre. Kuvalich and I-10 in world markers will now start to fade as you approach them, with the Kuvalich marker fading in within 20 meters and the I-10 star marker fading in within 5 meters. They have also reduced the overall transmission frequency in survival missions and they updated the survival tower icon on markers to match the objective UI. The health and damage resistance of Samara's targets has also been increased, and lastly, they reduce the volume radius of domestic drones in the orbiter. For optimizations, DE heavily optimized survival missions and replaced the old script with a new one. They also optimized the performance of Karkonox and APOC armaments to improve performance, how custom shadow quality settings are applied, the Kuva Nukor's effects, lighting across many dojo rooms, enemy awareness code, the way the codex is stored to save nearly 3.5 megabytes of memory, the way the star chart is stored to save nearly 2 megabytes of memory, language cache pre-processing, Hydron on Sedna, Hildren's Agent Storm and the effects on Titania's Lantern ability to improve performance, and they optimized the Silver Grove Shrine by reducing the number of particles. They also made optimizations to the Kuva Fortress tile set, a micro optimization to the resource management system, and they cleaned up generic explosions by replacing certain effects that were causing performance issues. Lastly, they fixed a memory leak in dojos that could result in a crash after entering a large number of rooms, and they fixed random zombie players and optimized performance in relays in general. Now as for the mainline fixes, there is, like usual, a lot of them. DE fix the synth deconstruct mod not functioning if it's the only synth mod equipped and you die and revive. They fixed an extremely specific method of melee coptering by interrupting a slide attack with a dodge roll. A bug where certain pain reactors would make grenier faces look like they were put in a microwave on the melt butter setting. 
A rare case of some GPU particles not following the player, NPCs doing an extremely slow crawl forwards often when they fail pathing, Lech Krill changing to his Gorgon mid-swing if you moved out of melee range, an inability to operate a Void Blast for extended periods of time during the carrying moments in the second dream quest, an out-of-memory crash if a player or enemy was executing a melee attack while being teleported at a great distance, they fixed the interception HUD breaking on rare occasions when joining an in-progress mission, players in towns, relays and dojos sometimes staying as the blue Excalibur until moved, they fix Grendel turning into a blob of polygons when submerging into submersible arcwing water with Pulverize active, the vengeful pool ephemera being way too bright after customising it and it not inheriting arcwing scaling. They fixed a missing controller button callout to rank up an arcane in the arcane manager screen. The Sykuta Prime Sigil, the Agaru, Yamiko Prime, Zayahu, Sykuta Prime, and Opulus Robe Sign done as clipping through the Titania Empress skin. K Drive spawning backwards when using the hotkey versus using the gear wheel. They fixed being unable to collect points in a specific spot in the Index Gas Works map. Several issues occurring to the Index if the final player in a squad opens the wager credits window but presses escape instead of confirming. They fix conduits in disruption missions missing collision for warframes. Conduit counts in arbitration disruption missions going above the needed amount to extract. Not being able to vertically scroll or zoom in and out of the Plains of Eidolon or or Valis advanced maps. They fix the scapula sign Donna disappearing at odd angles. They fix both the host and client being unable to see or hear each other's reload effects on the Shadu. A few edge cases of Alad V sometimes not spawning properly in his assassination mission. Shield Lancers being entirely Highly way too precise with their shots instead of their shots taking into account accuracy variables. They fixed issues with Warframes and Companions sometimes disappearing in the arsenal, entering the extraction point in any mission, deactivating Warframe stealth abilities and making them visible again. They fixed broken icons for mastery rank in the in-game market or inventory if the selected weapon had a minimum mastery rank requirement. Wild flickering issues on one of the doors in the Grenier Asteroid and Galleon tile sets. Defiled Requiem mods counting towards the owned total when viewing Requiem Relic Rewards. They fixed Wukong's clones tripping the laser traps in the Brutia Eris mission. They fixed getting stuck and being unable to use the unstuck command in Sharkwing in the pump station on the Desdemonia Uranus node. They fixed the Officium Sign Donna on Equinox's Antonym skin getting wacky positioning when swapping between her day and night forms. And they fixed the Archon not re-equipping after Parazon finishes and instead equipping your melee weapon. Page 4 out of 8. They fixed emblems attaching incorrectly and rotating when equipped with the Kuva Zavak shoulder armor. Texture tiling issues with Gauss's red line effects. An inability to chat link an extensive list of signed honors. Ugly and busted blast effects for the Sapa Redeemer and Redeemer Prime. An issue with enemy navigation in the Grenier Galleon tile set where enemies would attempt to cross through a solid window. They fixed a hole in a map due to missing walls in the Grenier Galleon tile set. Texture issues with floor and rail lab assets in the lower halls of Ascension Rooms, a large ceiling pipe missing its material in the Grenier Sea Lab tile set, they made fixes towards high latency issues in the Vox Solaris quest. They fixed Mace's Peacemaker and Titania's Razorwing deactivating melee only mode if it was active before those abilities were cast. They fixed the Osprey in the Octavia Anthem quest having the Hunhao tag. Being able to escape the Grenier Sea Lab tile set using Itzel's Arc Line. Being unable to complete the Avoid the Scanners portion of the War Within quest if the player used the Arc Burners to get ahead of the ship. They fixed the Automatic Mod's health regeneration lingering perpetually if the Sentinel was not present to the end of it. They fixed the Warframe launcher not displaying correctly on systems with high DPI and custom scaling settings. They fixed the launcher creating a GPU cache folder every time it's launched. They fixed only energy values for Warframe abilities showing changes that mods apply when viewing a Warframe mod link. They fixed an inability to chat link anomaly shards even if you have some in your inventory. They fixed ally grenier napalms damaging themselves with their own missiles. More fixes were made towards inaccurate Arcwing tutorial quest text when indicating how to use afterburners, Lech Krill and Vor's cinematics not including their weapons, scrolling the mouse wheel while hovering over a planet in the star chart resulting in the Warframe zooming improperly, they fixed bad water materials in the Grenier Forest tile set, 
They fix certain attacks with the Architytron and Crushing Ruin or Shattering Storm stances equipped, not consuming slam capacitor charges but still getting the damage multiplier bonus. They fix the Architytron consuming slam capacitor charges in the melee combos with slam attacks. They fix the Architytron consuming slam capacitor charges in melee combos with slam attacks without it releasing its AoE charge. They fixed an issue where transitioning from the Plains Vardalon or Orvalis to Cetus or Fortuna would cause the equip and unequip animation to occur. They fixed Mirage's Hall of Mirror clones not animating properly during double jumps or wall jumps. They fixed being unable to quick melee or swap back to the arc gun when fighting Jordis's Golem. They fixed an attachment offset on the Vapus Aquila in the Gas City tile set. They fixed a flag in the Grenier Settlement tile set being entirely unlit compared to the others. Very bright lights in certain areas of the Gas City tile set. Multiple areas in the Gas City tile set where exterior light was bleeding inside. Lighting issues on certain doors and hallways in the Grenier Galleon tile set. Lech Krill becoming invincible after he's cast his cold abilities at the same time his backpack got destroyed. They fixed Lech Krill's Brock disappearing for a moment before doing an overhead melee ice slam wave attack. They fix clients in the index, losing all functionality aside for the pause menu if they die and a host migration occurs before they are able to respawn. Aero agility not working when holding down an additional movement direction at the same time as aim gliding. Wukong's Cloud Walker not completing its casting animation when cast immediately after firing a low fire rate weapon. They fix the effects for Harrow's Covenant not applying correctly on Sentinels. The Spore Ephemera showing the outline of Nidus's wings in his mutated state before he has enough stuff for them to actually show. They fix the focus point cap increase missing from the list of rewards in the mastery rank screen. Clients getting a script error in interception missions when standing in the capture circle and attempting to abort the mission from the menu. They fix railjack and decoration placement headers appearing under the arc wing settings in the options. They fix client seeing effects on special duty coil drives when it should be disabled because it's caught in the ambush trap in the defend the coil drive Valus bounty missions. They fix broken and flickering textures on the Ara Mars node. They fix players getting stuck on a group of rocks after first encountering the Golden Moor in the Wolverine quest. A map hole in the Golden Moor encounter in the Wolverine quest. Being able to see outside of the map when in the plains of Eidolon and Cetus tunnel by crouching and looking towards the ceiling. They fix being able to hop out of the Ara Mars node map using Nesha's Blazing Chakram, a visible gap in the wall of the Grenier Galleon mission during the Saya visual quest, a map hole in the infested ship tile set, black square textures in the Corpus ship tile set, the Atavis Prime knee plate sitting off center on the Ivara Kuvail skin, they fixed rooms in the dojo showing as insufficient space despite not overlapping with the observatory even with larger amounts of space given, they fixed a large map hole in the Lua tile set, they fix the walk trail of the burning step, frozen step, phase step, etc. ephemeras spawning half of the effects when equipped on a warframe with wisps, floating animations. They fix some cases of the deploy resource extractor button losing functionality and some cases of needing to select it twice. They fix Frost Hasami skin clipping with the Targus Prime Greaves and the Syrinx leg plates. Ignis's energy color appearing defaulted in reflections when in mission. The Lacera's handle not fitting into the Warframe's hand when equipped with the Wisp animation set. They fix the ability menu remaining open when entering a Sanctuary Onslaught Conduit. A script error with the Moa Anti-Grav Grenade Precept mod, Saren's Toxic Lash ability, and the Denial versus Blinding Beam ability. They fix the AI getting stuck in certain spots on the Spear Mars node. The Vapos enemies and several items introduced in the Gas City Remaster missing from the Codex, those being the Biogas Barrel, Helium Barrel, Cable, Vector Shield, Vapos Detron Ranger, Vapos Sniper Ranger, Vapos Tech Ranger, Vapos Nullifier Ranger, and Distressed Pipes. They fix characters appearing distorted due to excessive radial blur in the Sacrifice quest during the Confront Umbra portion. Texture flickering on Spy Vault doors in the Grenier Settlement tile set. A map hole that was only accessible if you're in Hydroid's Undertow. They fixed an issue where attempting to alt fire where there isn't enough ammo left for an alt fire would cause issues, and they stated that weapons will now immediately reload on secondary fire in cases where secondary fire does not have enough ammo rather than waiting for the reload from the empty delay. They fixed lack of functionality and script errors when renaming, favoriting, changing glyphs, or deleting a selected loadout that does not appear in the grid due to search filters. They fixed issues with fog textures for the Lua and Infested Ship tile set, a script error related to Eidolon projectiles, the Itzel chestplate being angled slowly 
slightly to the left on Mag Prime, Sentinels attempting and then cancelling attacks on the Synthesis target over and over again. They fix the melee attack with Tooltip, clipping in the wall in the Vor's Prize mission. They fix laser hazards in the Gas City tile set, missing localization, Vorban's Tesla Nervos roller drones stuttering in the Railjack, fog pinching issues in the Planes Vital on Skybox, a crash in the Simulacrum caused by the Amalgam Arca Hecate's copy ability. They fix the waiting for players button in the UI when loading into the Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. They fix a crash caused by clients loading in a host orbiter while the ramp closing script was running. They fix a crash when playing corpus infested survival missions as a client after the host crashes. A script error in the Octavia Anthem quest. A crash in the Conclave due to X was killed by X message. The Neo G2 relic being set to rare in the Market and Syndicate relic packs. And it is now listed as uncommon. They fixed Riven challenges requiring, without being affected by a status effect, resetting when the status effect is blocked by immunity from sources such as Nezha's warding Halo. They fixed a script error with Mirage's Eclipse ability, a script error when fighting the Ropalolist, and a script error when extracting from the Plains of Eidolon. They fixed an inverted poly on Grendel's body which left a gap in his mesh, missing tooltips for untradeable items if the item labels were turned off, making it difficult for players with labels off to know what the item is that they can't trade. They fixed Ordus's spoken dialogue not matching his transmission during the second Orbiter cutscene in the Wolving Quest. Fixes were made towards unnecessary burst sounds from explosion projectiles, missing door frames in the Helene Saturn node, a case of a locked door icon showing unlocked in the Grenier Galleon tile set, the Furus missing its magazine, a rogue teleport volume in the Stoffler Lua node that could be triggered unintentionally, a script error with the Edo Prime armor's effects. They fixed a button box in the UI being fought too short for the bundle names that exceed 36 characters in the in-game market. They fix cases where adding a gender alternative to a string resulted in improper use of capital letters in localized clients. They fixed incorrect operator lip sync movements when playing on a non-English game client. The controller binding screen sometimes not showing an accurate representation of which buttons are bound on PC. Special characters appearing as boxes when cycling through the controller set list in the options menu. They fix the far right side of the numerous options in the options menu not being focusable with your cursor. And they fixed a script error with the Oxalus's Scan Aquatic Lifeforms precept, a script error that would occur if the transmission scripts during a host migration, and a script error that would break the excavation UI when replaying the Arcwing quest. So those were the general changes, fixes, and additions for update 27.2, its mainline update. This video is currently at 35 minutes as of recording. So I just want to say, if you got to this point, thank you for watching. And once again, hopefully it helped you, you know, while you're playing something else or whatever, and you want to stay up to date with all the fixes and stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. Bye.